Before watching the video, don't forget to subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscribe button below and clicking the bell icon to be notified whenever we publish a new video. Understanding your test results and monitoring your kidney function. Today I wanted to disperse some of the mystery to do with lab results. It's understandable that interpreting test results can be a very stressful experience, especially if you are unwell. Your test results contain lots of names and figures, and maybe it is easy to tell which statistics are getting better or worse, but not easy to tell what all of this means. If you are clear about what the different measurements mean you are likely to feel much more empowered in regard to improving your health. Plus once you have gotten into your regime of natural therapies and see your test results improving, it will be a lot more satisfying if you understand what they all mean. There are several main parameters that are used to assess kidney function, and we will go through each of these to gain a clear understanding of how they reflect your kidney function. EUN stands for blood, urea, nitrogen. This is measured in a blood test. High levels of BUN indicate a decline in kidney function. Urea is formed in the liver from the metabolism of protein. The kidneys then filter urea and pass it out through the urine. If the kidneys are not functioning effectively, then urea levels will build up. If BUN levels are raised, but creatinine is normal, this may indicate a transient decreased blood flow in the kidneys, and is not a true sign of kidney disease. This is an example of why all measurements need to be taken into account when assessing disease. Natural Tips there are many natural remedies that can be used to assist in decreasing urea. Parsley is particularly good, and should be added to meals or juiced with other vegetables. There are also a wide range of nutrients that are appropriate. Quercetin and folic acid are specific for treating high urea. If you have blood in your urine it is recommended to supplement with iron, and the amount required will depend upon your blood tests. The herbs Terminalia arjuna golden seal and marshmallow would all be suitable. In the US, BUN is measured in milligrams per deciliter and elevated BUN is any reading higher than 60 milligrams per deciliter, which indicates moderate to severe renal failure. In Australia, urea is measured in millimoles per liter and the reference range is 3.0 to 10.0 millimoles per liter. blood cell counts. Hb. This stands for hemoglobin, which is often decreased during kidney disease. This declines in relationship to EPO or erythropoietin. Hemoglobin is the protein that carries oxygen around the body. In the US the hemoglobin reference range is 13 to 18 grams per deciliter for men and 12 to 16 grams per deciliter for women. In Australia, the reference range is 11.5 to 16.5 grams per deciliter. HCT. This stands for hematocrit, which means the proportion of the blood volume that contains red blood cells. This should sit around 48% for men and 38% for women. RBC. Stands for red blood cells and is a test that measures how many red blood cells you have. Your RBC count will dictate how much oxygen is received by your tissues, as red blood cells contain hemoglobin which carries oxygen around the body. MCV. Mean corpuscular volume. This measures the volume of the average red blood cell. As part of the standard complete blood count, the MCV figure helps to determine which form of anemia may be present, if necessary. MCH. Mean corpuscular hemoglobin. This measures the average mass of hemoglobin contained in a blood cell. The count will be low in forms of anemia, where red blood cells are smaller than usual. MCHC. Mean corpuscular hemoglobin concentration. This measures the concentration of hemoglobin in a specific volume of blood. This is calculated using the HCT and HB level. This figure will be low in iron deficiency and anemia as a result of chronic disease. RDW. Red blood cell distribution width. This measurement is used to diagnose which form of anemia you may have, 
by working out the varying sizes of the red blood cells in a blood sample. The diagnosis of anemia through RDW readings also takes MCV into account. For example, low RDW seen with low MCV would indicate iron deficiency anemia. Erythropoietin or EPO. This is the hormone that is produced by the kidneys which controls the production of red blood cells. This hormone will begin to decrease as kidney disease progresses. Anemia is the main concern from this. Iron levels. Anemia is a common factor in kidney disease, and can be assessed as part of a standard blood test. Anemia occurs for several reasons, but in this case, a lack of available iron. Serum iron. This measures the amount of iron that is circulating in the blood, or in simpler terms this is the measurement of iron in the blood, as opposed to that which is stored. The Australian reference range for iron is 5 to 30 micromoles per liter and the US reference range is 60 to 170 mcg per deciliter. Transferrin is a plasma protein or blood protein that is required for stored iron to be transported around the body. The transferrin level helps to analyze the form of anemia you may have. If transferrin is low, then the capacity to produce hemoglobin will be reduced, which leads to anemia. In the case of kidney disease, excess transferrin can be removed into the urine, causing a low count. The Australian reference for transferrin is 18 to 33 micromoles per liter and the US reference range is 204 to 360 milligrams per deciliter. Transferrin saturation. This measures the ratio of serum iron and total iron binding capacity, which is the capacity of the blood to bind iron to transferrin. In iron deficiency anemia, the transferrin saturation will be low but it can be normal in anemia seen with chronic disease. The reference range for transferrin saturation is 10 to 45 percent. Ferritin is a protein that stores iron in a non-toxic form in the cells, so that it can be released and delivered to where it is required. The Australian reference range for ferritin is 15 to 165 micrograms per liter and the US reference range is 12 to 300 nanograms per liter. Levels are usually higher in males, making the reference range higher. Natural health tips. If your EPO is very low your doctor is likely to give you EPO injections. You will need to get advice as to how much iron to take daily, as this will greatly depend upon your iron storage or ferritin. It is important to take vitamin C at the same time to enhance iron absorption. Supplementation is essential if deficient. But iron is also found in fish, egg yolk, dried fruit, beetroot, parsley and dark green leafy vegetables. You need the correct level of stomach acid to absorb iron so you may need to take a stomach acid tablet at the same time to enhance absorption. Urinalysis. This is a simple spot urine test that measures several markers of kidney dysfunction. This test can measure the pH of your urine, plus pick up levels of albumin, glucose, ketones, blood and bilirubin. This is a very generalized test and is not a clear assessment of the level of kidney damage. However, if any levels are out of range, it does indicate the necessity for further investigation. A 24-hour urine specimen will give a more accurate indication of the level of kidney dysfunction by measuring creatine in urea and nitrogen. As you can see, when broken down it is easier to understand what different kidney test results mean, and it is simple to use natural therapies to improve all aspects of kidney damage. It is recommended that when you are treating kidney disease with natural therapies, you should get your tests redone, about every 12 weeks to track your progress. It is important to remember that there is no magic instant cure, but when used appropriately, over time natural therapies can make an outstanding improvement that can easily be seen in your lab results. Note. A kidney diet can be a complex thing to juggle. If you require extra support you can find a complete step-by-step -step program for reversing kidney disease.
Simply click the link on the description below this video to watch some personal story of kidney health improvement that you will surely find inspiring. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. For more recipe and tips, subscribe to this channel.